So if you just got a new S22 or any other Samsung phone, or if you want to give your current Samsung a new look, then this video is for you. I'll show you everything that I did to customize my phone, some tips, and also my favorite widgets. This is what my phone looked like before. It's pretty boring and just overall not very personal. And this is what it looks like after. So I went for a cute and aesthetic look, but it's also a lot more functional than before. Okay, so the very first thing that I do is go into my settings, displays, and then navigation bar to change those three buttons at the bottom into swipe gestures. I think those just make navigating the phone much easier because with buttons, whenever I want to go back, I have to reach all the way down to the corner. But with swipe gestures, I can just swipe from anywhere on either side to go back. So it's much quicker to do. And also the buttons take up extra screen real estate. They don't really look that good. So yeah, I just think swipe gestures are far more convenient and intuitive. And I like to start with customizing the overall look of the phone. And the easiest way to do this is to find a theme from the Galaxy Store. Some of them do cost a few dollars, but this one that I found was free and I think it looks really cute. So it just takes one click to apply a theme and then pretty much everything on the phone is affected. Some of those built-in apps will get a special icon design, which is pretty cool. And sometimes the third-party apps will also have their icons tweaked a little to better match with the overall theme. The accent colors will also be changed, like these buttons in the pull-down menu. And even the interface will be changed for some of those built-in apps, like the phone app. The theme also gives you an always-on display image, but if you don't like it, you can change this separately in the settings. So just go to the lock screen and then always on display. Here, you can first select when you want to see it. I want to always see it and then just click on the clock style. You can pick whatever style you like and there's even more options for the image clock. For example, stickers, AR emojis, if you're into that, or one of your own photos. In general, I like using a theme because it just gives a very coherent and personalized look, but it does change the look very drastically. So if you like how One UI looks and just want to add some subtle customizations, then first go into settings, click on wallpaper and style and select a wallpaper. And then you can choose one of the color palettes. It's generated based on your wallpaper. You can enable the app icon option here too. Hit apply and then the colors for the built-in app icons will be changed to match with the wallpaper the accent colors on the phone will be changed too. But other than that, it doesn't really affect anything else. So this is a great way to quickly match your phone's colors. And before we continue, I want to introduce today's video sponsor, Scribe. So Scribe is a tool that will automatically generate how-to guides in seconds. And all you have to do is install the Chrome extension and press record. So for example, I want to make a quick guide on how to obtain the transcript of a YouTube video. I have the Scribe extension installed, so I just need to press record. Scribe records all of my clicks and key presses, so I just need to simply show how I obtained the video transcript. After I'm done, I hit stop recording, and after a few seconds, Scribe generates a web page with a step-by-step -step guide. There's automatic screenshots that show exactly how I just obtained the YouTube video transcript. And of course, you can edit any part of the guide, like the instructions. You can also merge or delete steps. After you're happy with the guide, just copy the link and now you can share this guide with others and they'll be able to access it super easily since it's just a web page. Scribe can certainly be helpful for sharing how-to guides with your clients, colleagues, friends, family, and even just to make a reminder guide for yourself. You can check out Scribe at the link down below. And then I organize the home screen and the app screen and actually you can change the grid size in the settings. I like to have the app screen on 4x6 and then I put the home screen on five by six because then I'll have the most amount of room to place all of my widgets. So for the widgets, just pinch your home screen and then click on widgets. And these are the widget options. There's a ton, but these are my favorite ones. The first one is the Samsung calendar list. So this can sync with your Google calendar and you can scroll on this, which is super nice. I also just think it looks really good with the rounded corners and also the two tone background. And another good one is this Google search bar. Whenever you want to search something, Thing, one tap and you're in Google. Very convenient. The Spotify widget is a great one too because after you start a song in Spotify, you can exit the app and then from the widget directly, you can play or pause a song or skip forward. The email widgets, like the ones for Gmail and Outlook, are really good too.
too. And the Gmail one is really pretty looking with the matched colors. I kind of wish the Outlook one would look like that too. But other than these built-in widgets, there's also a bunch of really good third-party widget apps, like this one called Another Widget. So it shows a bunch of information, like the date, time, and events on the calendar, and it can sync with your Google Calendar. And if you go into the app, you can also customize a bunch of things, like the text color, font, and also the background. This is how I customized it. I added a little semi-transparent background, and right now I just have it showing the date and the time. And another one that I downloaded is called Battery Widget Reform. So this one has a circle widget and you can choose what it shows. And right now I just have it set on the amount of battery remaining. I'm not a big fan of this green teal color, but you can change the color of the text and also the bar to just better match with the rest of the phone. Now, this app also has a graph widget that shows the battery usage over time, so you might also find this useful. And I also have Google Keep. It's a really good checklist and notes app, and I especially like it because it syncs across my Google account and is also cross-platform, so I can access my notes anywhere from any device. And a nice bonus is that the widget interface for this app is color matched and looks really pretty. All right, and the last one that I have is called Overdrop. It's for the weather. In the past, I just used the default weather widget, and that one is fine. It looks quite pretty too, but Overdrop just offers more fun and fancier looking options. I really like this one right here. It shows me all the information that I want and looks really nice too. So yeah, those are some of my favorite widgets. And by the way, I recently found out that now you can create widget stacks, which is great for saving space or to hide a widget that you don't want to see all the time. So I like having a Gmail widget to quickly get to my emails, but I don't need my emails on display all the time. And so I put it into a stack with my Google Keep Notes, and that way I only see my emails when I swipe to it. So this is my current phone setup. It's mostly just dominated by widgets. I actually don't use that many apps on a daily basis, which is why my home screen doesn't have too many apps. And moving on, so one of my favorite features that's missing on stock Android is the edge panel. And I can open this thing no matter where I am on the phone. So to edit the apps that are in here, just click on the hamburger icon at the very bottom. And in my edge panel, I like to put my most used apps here and also the apps that I often do split screen or floating windows with. One downside of split screen mode is that you have to dig through a long list of apps in order to find the second app that you want opened. But if you have that app stored in your edge panel, then then all you have to do is just open up the edge panel and drag it in. So this can definitely make doing the split screen much quicker. All right, and then I go into my settings and there's definitely a lot of things you can change here, but these are the ones that I would change. So first, under notifications, I can change the notification pop-up style, and I like to just keep it on the brief style. I can also manage the notification permissions for all of my apps here. And underneath the advanced settings, I can make some changes to the status bar, which is up there next to the time. So this is actually one of my favorite Android features because it gives me a preview of what notifications I have. So I'm actually going to change this to all notifications. That's all the changes for notifications. And next for the display, here you can choose between light or dark mode and I'm actually going to keep it on light mode for now. So a new setting here is this extra brightness toggle. This can certainly be useful when you're outside underneath bright sunlight, but only use this when you need to. I wouldn't leave it on because this is more so just a digital filter, and so it might affect the contrast and colors on your phone. And next, underneath the lock screen. So other than the always on display, you can also edit the lock screen widgets here. This is what you get when you tap on the clock on the lock screen face, and here, I'm I'm just going to leave on weather and today's schedule and then turn everything off. I'm also going to edit the lock screen shortcuts. There are a few options with no unlock needed and then even more with unlock required, pretty much all your apps, but I'm going to change it to the calculator. And the last thing that I'm going to take a look at is the notifications. Here I can decide what I want to see and I'm just going to leave it on icon only. And I'm also going to make sure that the show on always on display toggle is turned on because I also want to see my 
my notification icons on my always on display. And the last place that I'm going to go to is the apps. Here, I'm going to look at my current default apps. And if Bixby is set as my default digital assistant, then I'm going to change it to Google Assistant because it's just much better. And also for the keyboard, I'm going to change it from the default Samsung keyboard to Gboard. It has better predictive typing and you can also customize the look of it too. So yeah, that's it for the settings. And the last thing that I customize is the pull down menu. So here I put my most used ones in the top six slots because I can access those with just one swipe down. Whereas for all the other ones, I need two swipe downs. There's a lot of buttons here by default. A lot of them I never use. And so I just get rid of those. And then I also add a few more into this. All right, so that's it for all of the customizations. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If there's anything else that you would like to add, please leave it in a comment down below. And I really hope to see you in another one of my videos. Bye.